Patty. You're going to use every bowl you have in your house trying to make enough food to feed a family. Now we're going to take our chicken. We're going to place it into our bowl. I'm going to mold that to the bowl. Now we're going to fold over the saran wrap and do each side. Flip it over this way. Nice and tight. Now once that's wrapped, we want to place it into the freezer for about an hour. I like how she wore gloves, presumably to not have to touch the raw chicken directly, and then proceeds to touch every single thing in her kitchen without taking off the gloves. Really not doing much for yourself. All right, let's see if we can unwrap this thing. Oh. And unravel the rest here. Place that into our flour, nice and gentle. I'm gonna coat that completely. All right, goes into our egg now. I wanna cover it all up. Now it goes into our breadcrumbs. Give it a nice flip again. Now we're gonna pop this into the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Okay, so it's actually been about 30 minutes. Let's take a look. Whoa! So basically, you've managed to make bread crumb coated chicken in about 400 extra steps. I mean, seriously, what is it with these life hack and cooking hack channels always trying to trick you into thinking their way is less work? It is okay. literally Don't always get. more effort to use their methods. We'll be yeah. sure. Right, so cut this in half now. Uh, okay, ready? That looks just like bread. All right, I'm gonna grab some mayo here. Damn. You know what? I don't want to. I don't like what I'm seeing, quite frankly. You have just created a monster. I thought we were making a vessel for some sort of sauce, some sort of basic chicken meal. And you mean to tell me you have created a hamburger bun out of chicken? Is this legal? Because it shouldn't be. At least not doing it this way. I'm going to start with the block of Velveeta cheese. You just know if you're on a social media site and you're watching a cooking video and a block of Velveeta cheese gets thrown into the mix, it's not going to end well. We're going to add some macaroni noodles. We're about halfway up the cheese. Now we're going to add some heavy whipping cream. You just want to use enough to cover the noodles. That's enough right there. Now we're going to add some freshly grated Monterey Jack cheese. And last little bit right here. Make that nice and even. Now we're going to add about one cup of water. It's gonna help our noodles cook. Now I'm gonna add some mozzarella cheese. Now we're gonna place this into the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. What is with these channels and being so adamantly against cooking pasta in the traditional way? I mean, this looks fine, except for the fact that you just didn't at least kind of cook the pasta before you put it in. I mean, fine is kind of a gracious term, I will admit. There's enough cheese in this dish to kill a large horse, but you know what I mean. Now, while that's baking, we're going to make our topping. I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. Need a lot to cover the top. Now, we're going to add some melted butter. Nope. I'm gonna give this a white mix here. Combine all that together. So when it looks like brown sugar, that's when you know it's ready. Now I'm gonna add some seasoning. I'm gonna add some garlic powder, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, some parsley flakes to make it look pretty. And last but not least, some grated Parmesan cheese. The more I watch these videos, the more I realize that these dishes are pretty much all made of the same ingredients, just a few differences here and there. Like, I don't think I've ever seen this woman not bread something to start with two eggs in our Doritos bag. Next, we're going to add a little bit of milk. Um, you know what? No, I'm not even going to humor this one. I'm sorry, people. I have standards. We're going to start by adding some boiled pasta, and I want to fill it about three quarters way up. Crack one egg. There we go. Nice and pretty. Next, we're going to add some milk. I'm using about 175 milliliters. Next, we're going to add some vegetable oil, just using a quarter cup here. Now we're going to give it a little bit of flavor using paprika. Next, I'm gonna add some nutmeg. This gives it a nice flavor as well. I'm gonna pop both yolks. And I'm gonna gently stir this around. I mean, at least the pasta is boiled, I guess. But this is still just dumb stunt food. She literally poured the pasta out of a mixing bowl that she could have just done this in. But instead, to get more comments and feed the algorithm, she mixes it in a very inefficient way so people get angry. And uh, it's working. I find that by twisting this, this one's best. Yes, if you entered this into the burnt noodle with egg and nutmeg competition, I think you might just win first place. Listen to that sizzle. Okay, we're gonna take a cutting board now, place it on top. Very slowly and gently. Wow, it worked! 
Oh, really, it did? I suppose me and you might have different definitions of that word. So the first thing we want to do is dip a taco shell in some cake mix. That's gotta be the first time a human being has ever said that in history. Now it's time we dip a taco in some cake mix? <coughs> what? Look, I know people joke about Americans' diets, but I promise we do not eat this way. Make sure we fully cover that. Now that it's completely covered, we want to dip it in some hot oil. Be gentle, don't burn your fingers. This one should be done. Take it out and transfer that over here, right next to the other one. Now we're going to take another taco shell and place it inside for it to hold its shape while it dries. Now, once they're cool, we're going to remove our taco shells and place them into our taco holder. You know what's sad? I could definitely see this being on the dessert menu at one of those taco shops that charge like $14 a taco, and I bet people buy it. Look how cute that is. I'm gonna pour some water in a pot and bring that to a boil. Place a bowl on top here, and we're gonna melt some chocolate. Set that in there. See how that's steaming? That's gonna melt our chocolate nicely. So smooth. We're gonna fill our tacos. Oh yeah, this is the best dessert ever. I'm gonna take a banana, chop that nice and fine. Gonna take our bananas, place them inside. A few more here. Now we're gonna grab some strawberries. We're gonna chop these up like our bananas, nice and fine. That's better. A couple more things. Scoop up some ice cream here. It's the best. My favorite. Last one here. You know, this has the potential to be delicious if you were to just fry some cake batter and shape it into the form of a taco. But the fact that there is an actual taco shell inside of this just ruins it. You can't just fry away the taste of a pre-bought taco shell. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but the flavors of strawberries and ice cream and the flavors of an old El Paso taco shell do not exactly mix. Well, guys, another day, another video full of horrifying recipes. Which one was the worst? Personally, I'm gonna have to go with the chicken hamburger bun. That thing looked vile. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Whenever you have something really cold and then you get this short, sharp kind of sensation, that sensitivity, it can get worse. The problem is not going to go away by itself. I always recommend Sensodyne. It's specially designed to care for their sensitivity. And I've had people coming back to me saying it's made a difference. It works. I started my day with some homemade broth and the fact that this is gonna gross you guys out just brings me so much joy. I drink it while getting some morning sun. My new favorite soup. Carnivores, omnivores, herbivores. These are the three generally accepted groups of animals on this planet. And you'd think, with there being so many humans, we would fit in to one of those categories. But with our human need to constantly feel different, we decided we're, we're not gonna follow that, all right? Sorry. Now, I'm sure you've heard of vegans, vegetarians, the keto diet, people who love the raw diet, all of these different ways of living that restrict the way you eat. And one of the newer ones, with the rise of people like Carnivore MD and the Liver King, has been people who identify as carnivores. Now, I'm not saying like people who joke around saying they only eat meat. I'm talking about people who genuinely do not allow plants to enter their body, including the lady we're going to be talking about today 
today, it's Courtney Luna, a TikToker who uh, only allows herself to pretty much eat steak and butter and cheese. Now look, I don't care what you eat. I don't care if you're a vegan or a carnivore. That's your private business. But when you take it online and then you start trying to convert people to only eating hamburgers, then you've opened yourself up to questions. And well, that's where I come in. Let's begin. Please subscribe. Sorry for the elevator music, had to get rid of some copyrighted music, you know TikTok. But here we have some results from seven weeks on a carnivore diet. Lost 15 pounds, feel better mentally, better sleep, and you know what? I don't doubt it. It's been seven weeks. You've started a new diet, you've changed the way you're eating, you've lost weight. Of course you're going to feel better about yourself. Does that mean eating only meat is necessarily healthier? No, but you're on a diet, so you're probably subconsciously eating less because you know you're supposed to be on a diet, and that's probably what's actually led to the weight loss, not the fact that you're only eating meat. But once again, it's it's only been seven weeks. You might be feeling good now, but you eat nothing but red meat for the next 10 years. Your heart is going to be begging for mercy. My new favorite soup. I cooked one pound of ground pork. I just seasoned mine with salt, but feel free to use a breakfast sausage. Drain out all that grease. And then I added this gelatinous homemade beef bone broth. I warmed that up a little bit so I could dump it in. I love the little blob and stir it up, warm it up, then add in one cup of cream cheese, add salt to taste. And I like to top my soups with a dollop of sour cream. I mean this in genuinely the nicest way I think I can mean it. I would not even allow this near my dogs, much less feed it to them. This is meat cereal, ma'am. Milk, ground beef, and sour cream with a little salt. No, that no. sounds like one of the worst things you can make ever. Seriously, this is just silly. It makes me hope that these accounts are just satire. A few seasonings, maybe like a potato, some broccoli, something to make this an actual soup, I promise, is going to hurt you less than a dollop of sour cream. I mean, seriously.